Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm going to speak to you on something that you know so much, but probably you haven't thought about it that much. I said something you know, but you haven't thought about it that much. You, it's, it looks some way to you, but I'm going to really talk to you this morning about just a very simple thing. Break the oppression. Break it. And what I, when I say break the oppression, it means that you have some work to do. Hallelujah. Today, Christians, we want to sit down and then we want to just want everything done for us when we, we have a role to play. My key verse is in, and uh, I will run through a lot to get there. It's in how Isaac blessed his son um, Esau. Genesis 27, 39 and 40. His father Isaac answered him, your dwelling will be, this is the blessing. That, I mean, he said his blessing is finished, but he has something anyway. Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. And 40, he says that you will live by the sword and you will save your brother. But, say but. Say but. but. Say it again. You know, there is always a but, but we don't pay attention. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off, from off your neck. But when you grow restless, sometimes you have to get, you, you have to tell yourself that enough is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell you, enough, enough is enough. Don't get too used to your circumstance. Sometimes we get too used to our circumstance and we think that eh, this is my portion, so I will take it like that. He says that, but when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. It gets to a point you need to act to break off the yoke from your neck. Because if you don't do that, that yoke is going to be upon you forever. Hallelujah. And you will complete, I mean, continue to whine and complain all the days of your life. Instead of you getting up and telling the devil that enough is enough, you sit down, you compromise, you enjoy it. You enjoy the pain. You enjoy the suffering. You enjoy the oppression. Sometimes you need to get up and break off that yoke from your neck. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of us are suffering like Esau. Many of us are going through many things, but we don't know what to do. This morning, I'm going to help you. I said this morning, I'm going to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 23, that was the birth of I, uh, Jacob and Esau. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. So it was not strange for what happened. But you see, what role did you play in accelerating it? What role did you play in really making sure that certain things happened. And you are really creating problems for yourself and you don't even know. I said you are doing what? You are creating problems for yourself but you didn't even know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God had given a word before they were even born. So, Everyone knew that he was going to serve the eldest. That the, the younger, the older is going to serve the younger. I want you to pay attention. Now, in the same chapter 25, if you go further, you will realize that 
at a point when they were growing from verse 29 to 34. Let's see the conversation. As they were growing, because today I don't want to take too much of your time, because I want you to understand that you have a role to play. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. If your brother comes and he says, I'm hungry, give me some of your food. Do you ask him to sell his birthright? In fact, do we even do that? Like you tell your elder brother that, look, I want to pay you with something to take that birthright. I want to be the eldest. It doesn't happen. But things were happening. And Jacob, you see, people blame Jacob, but that he was a bad person. He went to steal the blessing and everything. But I want you to really understand that he so had a role to play. Some things are happening to you that you play the role. And you need to begin to check your life. What did I do to allow this to come? Hallelujah. Amen. Look, I'm about to die. He so said, what good is the birthright to me? If the things you don't, you don't really respect today, you will need them tomorrow. Amen. That is why the Bible says that do not despise small beginnings. You see, you no, know, many of us, yeah, but this is, I, I remember um, when, when I was coming up and uh, I wanted to, I love to do, like, I want to work with my, because when I was a kid, I used to sell on the streets, and so I, I love to sell. I mean, that's, I would put stuff on my head to go and sell when I was a kid with my parents. So, you know, when you really do those things, it, some kind of business, uh, mindset comes to you and even as you are growing you still want to do some business so I was uh, doing some stuff and when I wanted to make my I mean open my first shop I didn't have enough money my money after taking the shop it, the interviews the, the money that was left was very small and uh, a friend of mine said that don't do it don't start because how can you start a small a shop with small some small stuff people will make more and people will be income to buy because it will not be attractive i said whether it's attractive or not attractive i will close it i will open it hallelujah because I respected my small beginnings. I cherished it. I didn't despise it. Though it was small, I knew my end would be big. Amen. Hallelujah. So I didn't mind and I started it. But to God be the glory, by the time I realized it had become big, when I started, I'll put some small things there. Majority of the things in the uh, shop were empty boxes. You put empty boxes in the back and you pack the things in front. So people think that everything at the back is also something. It is empty box. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's how I started. But it got to a point I needed a warehouse. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I did not despise my small beginnings. The bet right he didn't respect. At another point, he needed it. Hallelujah. So he said, go back to 32. Look, I'm about to die. He just said, what good is a better right to me? Now, I want you to understand it, this. You, you know, you think you are going to die. You will not die. Many of us, especially, I mean, young people, they, 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 they think if they don't eat papaya, they will die. So, in, because of one meal of papaya, you know, you are blaming Esau. But do you know that you've also sold your bed, right? One meal of papaya. Papaya. And one more. Now, Ghanaians have become so lazy that people are selling an anguamu. Have you seen the billboard? There's a big, big board, and I thought it was... So I was trying to really, really uh, call the name because I saw it, and uh, I was like, Angwa, nah, ah. Then I, re- I, I just, I said, Angwa. And then I, saw, I, said, I told mommy, I said, and it was late, a little bit late, so we couldn't see the picture. Well. So the next day when we got there, I told mommy, I said, you see, it's Angwamu. 
they put, you've seen it, a plate with anguamo, and then they put some green pepper and uh, red pepper, and then uh, beef. And then, and I'm saying that, when, when did Angwam, when we were kids, it was called Kwen Kwen. You know Kwen Kwen? They, they would go around the, the people and then they were Kwen Kwen, Kwen Kwen, and then they would send you. But today, what happened to us? You, you, even Angwam, you can't cook at home. You have to order Angwam to come. Abba! Hallelujah! And because of this anguamo, somebody will sell his or her bed right. Yes. Because you young, and, and I'm, this time I'm addressing the young women. In fact, plus the young men. The, some of the young men, they want to take advantage of everything. They want everything. So, uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, women that could be their mothers. You see? I want you to understand that stop it because it will get to a time you will need what you have given out. I want to share this with you before I even continue because it's a story that will speak to your spirit. We pray with people. Once we're praying with someone. And as we were praying, the person had gone through so much. As we were praying with the person, there was a manifestation. And the Spirit spoke about how God assess. He said, when I saw her, I could see her future. And you see, when we say these things, you say, ah, but if God is really blessing me, how can somebody? Look at this. He sold his future. Now, what happened was, he said, I saw his future, and the future was bright. So I bought her future. How? He said, I gave her gifts. And as I gave it to her, I used it to buy her future. So you will, if you, if God doesn't help you to get some deliverance and break out from this, you will be struggling in life and you will say that, ah, but why is all this going on? But why can't I make any, anything work for me? You work for somebody. Because what God gave to you, you gave it out through fornication. Because for a single meal, the person took you, bought a meal for you, sealed it with sex, and took your future away from you. And you are walking around, struggling, and you don't even know what's going on with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Young men and young women, it happens to both, both sexes. You can be a young man. And some woman will do that to you. And you can be a young woman and some man will do that to you. Look, the people that you see walking around, how would he have known that the boy, somebody's playing around with it? You think he's just a woman in your neighborhood until you poke their eyes. Until that happened, and listen to what she said. When I saw her, I greeted her, giving her respect for playing with your... Oh. Hallelujah. Because you don't know. Beloved, I pray that God will open our eyes. Because there are so much happening behind the scenes that we don't see. When you go for a movie or a, a theater something... What you see is not everything. The, what goes on behind the curtains, you don't know. You don't see. You can't even sometimes perceive it. And they come on stage to give you only what they want you to see. 
But what had gone on behind the scenes, you will never know. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to understand what is going on. We listen to music and we don't know how that music was produced. Some music is dedicated to the devil. It's dedicated to the devil. And a lot of it, some people go dance, uh, I mean, they, they say, I love rock music. Gang, 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 gang. Watch it. You don't know what you are enjoying. Even the Ghana music, you don't know what you are enjoying all the time. Things happen. Be careful what you are playing around with. You can't just walk around and think that everything is fine. May God open your eyes. May God open your eyes so that you see that your boil is not just a boil. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are taking almost everything for granted. We think, oh, it's okay. Oh, yeah. But as for this one, don't take anything for granted. I don't take anything for granted. Nothing. You may say, but you, you are too spiritual. Let me be too spiritual than being too fleshy. Because, you see, if I'm too spiritual and the thing is not spiritual, I'm still free. Amen. Hallelujah. But what about if I take it on the face value and there's so much behind it? I will be doing things. Hallelujah. I remember. And I say these things. <laughs> I prayed with someone. He called me. She called me like around 2, 3 a.m. And we prayed. Long ago. In fact, long ago. It was, I think, the first year of this church. I prayed. When I prayed, a lot of things happened because he called me and said, I'm dying. And uh, okay, well, I prayed. And when I prayed, she began throwing out and things happened. The next day, she called me and he said, uh, she's fine. I said that we thank God. And I prayed again. He said, I want to go to the hospital to check. I said, I don't stop people from going to the hospital. It's fine. Go. But then, suddenly, the Spirit of God really prompted me. Tell her, when she goes to the hospital, they will tell her that she has something, a certain disease but it's not true. She shouldn't take the medicine. So I said it. I told the person. And then she went. When she left the hospital, she called me. And then she said, they said I've gotten typhoid. And I, it's typhoid. Okay, right. And then they said I should go and buy A, B, and C. I said, I don't know the side effects of the medicine anyway, but you don't have what they say you have. So don't buy it. Now, you may say that, what about if I I won't tell you that if God has not said it. I won't do that. My wife takes medicine. My children take medicine. I don't stop them. But if God says that, don't take it. I'll tell them that don't take it. So I told her, don't take it. You don't have what they are saying you have. Then she said, okay. She didn't take it. She didn't go to buy it. And up till today, eight years later, she has no typhoid. Amen. She has no typhoid. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my own sister, Justin. One day I'll let her stand here and share that with you. That is what, when, I, when we started this church, I didn't ask her, she, we were all Presbyterian, I didn't ask her to leave Presby and come. No, I didn't. That brought her here. From that day, she said, this is where I belong. And she started coming to church here. That's how she got to this church. From that testimony. Hallelujah. So, I won't say to you what I haven't heard. But God specifically said, this is it. She shouldn't take the medicine. I didn't stop her from going to the hospital. But I told her what was going to happen, and it did happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us not take things for granted. 
because it is not everything you see that is what you are seeing. Most of the time, there are stuff happening behind it. Don't let anybody tell you that you are too spiritual. Jesus was spiritual, and he's still spiritual. Why did he send the Holy Spirit to us if he doesn't want us to be spiritual? Hallelujah. If he doesn't want us, would he have sent the Holy Spirit to us? He wouldn't have. The Bible says that we wrestle not against, but against what? Are they human beings? Are they of the flesh? They are in the spirit. And you say you fight with us. Your, your strength, you fail. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places, not in lower places. Hallelujah. So the things we are battling with in life, they are not flesh and blood. That's why Bible says that. You see, put a second uh, Corinthians chapter 10, 4 and 5 over there. I want you to see something. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Some people, they tell you that go and take cutlass and come and cut the devil. You're wasting your time. I said you're doing what? I would prefer to just do this and shoot the devil. Rather than go and take a gun. I would be wasting my money. Hallelujah. But if God really strengthens me and empowers me, doing this will mean more. Amen. Hallelujah. Than firing any kind of uh, anti-ballistic missile. It won't kill anyone. Hallelujah. The devil cannot be killed with your anti-ballistic missile. It doesn't work. Hallelujah. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with your physical strength. It's, it doesn't work. Hallelujah. So we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive. We take captive what? Can I come to your mind and hold your mind and take, and hold, take captive your thoughts? It's a spiritual warfare. That's why he says that the weapons we fight with, King James says they are not carnal. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the, your weapons are not weapons of this world. You don't need a gun to protect yourself. Amen. I said you don't need a gun to protect yourself. God knows how to protect you. God knows how to keep you. God knows how to protect you. But listen, if God wants you to use a gun, use it. Amen. Because sometimes, Jesus said, as you are going, you need sword. So there are times you will need it to really do something to some people, some things. But I'm just telling you that it is not... You see, we think that everything is because we need this, we need that. No! Let God direct you. The Spirit will let you know when you have to use your gun. Amen. You don't shoot by heart. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the Genesis 25. I think, I don't know whether we, uh, we are 33 or 32. Okay. Look, I'm about to die. He just said, what good is the bet right to me? The things you are despising today, you will cry for them tomorrow. But Jacob said, swear to me first. Jacob was wise. We don't say, we don't take things for granted. Swear to me first. And how many times has some foolish man asked you, young woman, to swear before something? And we are making pacts. He said, yeah, you see, if you love me, yeah, let me cut my hand and cut your hand and we use our blood. It's a spiritual thing. And many people have done that. They think it was love. It was foolishness. I said it was what? If you are here and you have done that, you need to come so we break that tie. You need to come. We break. You see, you think it's... Look, in this church, when we were downstairs, I was ministering one day. A woman who was manifesting, a spirit spoke through her and he said that, look... <laughs> Unless the man give us our wife. 
he will never move forward. I'm telling you. And this is somebody that suddenly God began to bless. He joined the church from the beginning and God began to bless. Within a matter of two years, he was getting contracts and things and he was really doing well. But you know, sometimes we, let, we allow things to get to us. And this young man did not understand what was going on. He thought it was a physical thing. He took it for granted. By the time he realized, he lost all his two cars and he was walking again. Yeah, but if, you, if the spirit said that, why didn't you cast it out? Yeah, but if you want it, what do, I, do you want me to do? If you want it and you won't really live for Christ and do what God wants you to do, what do you want me to do? Me, I can't do anything. It is God. Hallelujah. We are here and that was an eye-opener for us. Now we understood what was going on and we needed to break this, set them free. They won't even come to church. Somebody was sitting in church. Those who were playing with his boil. They had to let go. And at that moment, the ball burst. You don't know the essence of coming to church. Look, sometimes I want you to just sit in the atmosphere. Because things are, even as I'm speaking, things are happening. And you need to really understand it and allow yourself to receive from the Lord. If I were you, me, I don't miss church service though, unless I'm traveled. I don't miss church service. No, don't, don't think I'm because I'm the pastor. Even when I wasn't the pastor, I wouldn't. Look, if I, even I travel and I come back and I come in the evening and there's church service, I, my things are taken from the airport straight into the car to the church. I will go to church before I go home. You know, even here, I have done it. Sometimes I come and then I come with my bags in the evening. I come here. I tell mommy, don't come and pick me from the airport. Go to church. Start everything because maybe the airport will delay. When I come, I'll join. I come. I just, just freshen up a little bit and I'm here teaching. And you think I came from home. No. I have traveled from at dawn because, look, if you ask mommy, sometimes I travel from deep in the bush in Ivory Coast to the airport. And that takes me sometimes about five to six hours. And I come to the airport, sit at the airport, wait for the flight. And as I'm sitting, I'm reading, I'm writing, I'm reading, I'm writing. By the time I get here, I'm ready for the service. I'm praying. Even sometimes I'm fasting. By the time I get here, I'm ready for the service. And I come, straight away I come and I come and teach. And you don't know what I've gone through during the day. I'm sitting, sometimes I sit in a bus for six hours. Six hours I'm sitting in a bus from Dalwa to Abidjan. And then I come. I take a taxi straight to the airport. I sit in the airport, wait for my flight. I sit in the flight, I come, get to the airport, pick a taxi. Straight here to come and preach. Beloved, don't joke with church. Unless you don't understand. You come as and when you like. And when you come, you want everything. No. Be serious with God. Be serious. If it is not important, he wouldn't, Bible wouldn't say that, let us not stop meeting together. Every meeting is important. Especially in this church, every meeting has its own thing. Who knew that in this morning, in the worship, this was going to happen? Some people, oh yeah, but this time is the worship. Me, I'll come for the sermon. You've missed out. Amen. Yes, you've missed out. The Lord was here doing stuff in, uh, earlier in the service. And it doesn't mean God has gone anywhere. He's still here. But he would have dealt with whatever it was in that part of the service. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that our God is an orderly God. Amen. He does things in order. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him 
selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. He did what? How many have sold our birthright for food? For position in society or in, at a workplace? Some people... They've sold their birthright for marriage. They knew God said that don't mal- marry an unbeliever. Yet they will marry an unbeliever. Because they saw cast and they saw things. When you get into a marriage and you are suffering, now you want Jesus. You have sold that birthright long ago. Hallelujah. I said don't marry anything that has two legs. And wears trousers. And you men too, don't marry anything that wears a skirt. Today, they don't wear skirts anymore. Hallelujah. And don't, you see, you, see, you hear the ball of bed. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. Because many of us, eh, but me, I'm waited, uh, I'll take it like that and change. Hey! You yourself, have you changed since you came to church? You yourself, have you changed since you came to Christ? How many people have you been able to change? Let alone the one that is going to feed you. You'll be afraid. You'll be afraid. Even when he does anything, you're afraid that, you see, he bought some nice car for you and you don't want people to see that you are now walking. So even when he slaps you out, he says, it's okay. Because if you say, if you talk, you take the car. He says, I will divorce you. Hallelujah. And because of a car, you sold your birthright as a believer. Birthright that I'm talking about this morning is your birthright as a believer. We compromise. We give it up for anything. Yeah, but you see, uh, but I don't have a job. So if he says you sleep with me and give me a job, what, what is wrong? I mean, after the job, I will sleep with him again. You sold your birthright. That's all that you can get. God is not going to give you anything. Because now, you sold your position as a child of God for just a single, and even me, I don't even know how much they were paying you. That position, how much did they say they will pay you? I don't know. But you sell, and you don't know what God has. If Esau knew that he was going to, and for, Israel, for the Jews, the firstborn means a lot. And the only time, this is the second time we saw, oh no, no, this is the first time. The second time was, you know, <laughs> and it's Jacob again when he went like this for Joseph's children. God instructed him to do that. That's what he did. So Joseph said, Daddy, you are making a mistake. Because the right hand was to, supposed to be placed on the firstborn. The right hand was supposed to be placed on the firstborn. Two of you come. So tell me who is the firstborn? Who? Joseph. Okay, everyone says Joseph. Okay, so, so now um, Jacob is blind. He can't see. Now, you don't know these kids. So now, what's his name? Joseph brings his children to be blessed. And then he brings them, and he goes like this. He knows the father has to place the right hand on the eldest. So uh, don't worry about him being short. It's like Zacchaeus. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So he knew that the father will have to place the right hand on the eldest. So he really placed them in such a way because he can't see, so he can do it well. Then when he came, this man can't see, but this man went like this. Don't take anything for granted. And Joseph was complaining. No, daddy, no, 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 no. You, you are making a mistake. This one is the eldest. He knew what he was doing. He will mind him. He tried to move his hand. He went back. Because that is what is ordained. Hallelujah. And we need to understand 
Look, God is God. He knows what he's doing. If you are struggling today, don't complain. You don't know what is going to come out of that. Listen to me carefully. David didn't know that being in the field while all his brothers were at home was for him to gain experience to defeat Goliath. It was his testimony that defeated Goliath. Because being in the field for that long, he had learned how to really shoot with a sling. He had learned. He has experience in that. And he had a testimony because he's fought lions and other wild animals and he had won. So he wasn't afraid of a man with uh, how many? Uh, six fingers. I mean, ten. Uh, everybody has ten. He had twelve. He wasn't afraid of that man. He wasn't afraid of a man that the king is afraid of. The king can be afraid of anything. But with God, I am not afraid of anything. Hallelujah. So he was not depending on himself, but he was depending on the God that had led him to win battles in the wilderness. You see, beloved, I want you to understand your circumstance today is not a mistake. Stop complaining. Joseph could have slept with Potiphar's wife. He chose prison over having fun with a woman, a married woman. He chose prison. But you see, he had to go through prison to meet these two guys from Pharaoh's palace. How would he have met them if he had not gone to the prison? You see, let's listen to me. Your divine uh, um, helper is going to be met in a die situation. What you need to learn is in any situation that you find yourself in, still honor God. It could be a bad situation. It could be a distressing situation. It could be a painful situation. But don't stand there and curse God. Job had to go through a very, very painful situation. The wife said, curse God and die. He said, if I had really enjoyed the good that he gave to me, why would I at this point, if it is bitter, curse the same God? No, I wouldn't do it. You see, there are times we go, you, stop being the Christian who only prays when he gets 10 cities. That is the only time you praise God. When tomorrow you are looking for probably five CDs and you can't get, you think, eh, but you see, when they even say come to church, you say, but you see, eh, me, I don't have anything. It's left with my last five CDs. But when you get 100 CDs, then you begin to, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God when it is five CDs. Because those who learn to praise God when it is five CDs, God can trust them to give them one million. Because he knows that even five cities, if they will thank me and praise me, how much more one million cities? They will sum us all. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you are complaining every day. Eh, but eh, me only, me only. Why did God create me like that? How did he create you? Were you there when he was creating? He, create, he created you in his own image. It is because you don't know who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to understand God has never made a mistake Amen. and everything God does is right. Amen. Just understand that and walk in that. You will have a place in your heart to honor God whether it's in good or bad situations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can sit down. So he despises birthright. And how many of us have despised our birthright as Christians? We gave in to something that could only last for a while. We did not cherish 
what God was doing. Some will even give up their birthright as Christians just for a marks in an exam. And later in life, they get the degree. Yes, they got first class, but they can't get a job. And they are praying, God, give me a job. You sold it long ago for that degree. And your friend who really struggled and got even second class lower is driving past you and you are walking in the rain. Because he respected God and God's blessing is still upon his life. You sold yours and you got first class. Men saw you. Yeah, he got first class. Yeah, fine. That's your blessing. Take it. Take the paper. So you have a paper, but you don't have a position. Somebody has a lower paper, but he has a higher position. Things are happening to us, but you need to get angry and then begin to break yourself out. Hallelujah. You sold the birthright, so you need to fight it. You need to rise up and say, Lord, enough of this. I'm tired. I don't want this anymore. That's why Jesus came. Run to Jesus. He will forgive you and he will restore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can hear people saying that, you see, He just didn't sell it. He was hungry. What about if he had not really taken the food and he would have died? Will will he have still gotten the bet, right? Because that's what he said. Can you go back to that? I think 32. I'm about to die. Esau said, what good is the bet, right, to me when I'm dead? If I'm I'm dead, what is good? We forget about Jude 124. Hallelujah. Jude, not judges. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. He is able to keep you from stumbling. He is able to keep you from dying. Hallelujah. I said he is able to keep you To go through the whole semester, even though your mother didn't send you money and your father didn't send you money, God knows how to to keep you throughout the semester. He knows it! I said, He knows it! Sometimes we try to help God. He doesn't need your help, please. I said, He doesn't. Yeah, but why are you talking like that? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 6, 1 to 7. My focus will be on 6 and 7. So, David again brought together all the able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. They can guide it, but they can't touch it. I said they can guide it, but they can't touch it. Don't help God. I said don't help God. Let God be God and every man a liar. Let God be true. You see, we think that God said it, but he can't do it. Let God be true and every man a liar. Because God cannot lie. Hallelujah. So they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. Let's move with the ark of God on it. And Ahio was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord. With cast 
uh, castanets, harps, large timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. Because the oxen so God can't take care of himself. So Uzzah has to help God. Did he help, ask you for help? I said, did he? The point is that whether the ark will fall or not fall, obedience is better than sacrifice. Just obey God. He says, you in your family, they can't touch the ark. I have set aside people who have to do that. You don't have to do it. God knows how to keep care of him, take care of himself. Amen. He knows how to take care of himself. He doesn't need your help. That is why he said in Isaiah that if I were hungry, I will not ask you for food. Because the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. Is this Psalm 50? He says, the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. If I am hungry, I will not ask you. Some people, they think God is hungry. So they will go and steal and come and give God. He says that I don't even see it. I don't even see it. I want you. You see, the, the truth of the matter is that we have watered down the gospel. The word of God has been watered down. So we think we have to help God. Go back, please, to second Samuel. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. Verse 7. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irrelevant act. Because of what? God didn't need his help. God didn't. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. God's ark was going to fall. God is in heaven. He's asleep. He can't hold his own ark. So he's going to help God. God said, I don't need your help. And he struck him dead instantly. How many of us have died? But we don't know we are dead. Because physically we are not dead. We think that we are alive. Your act, your irrelevant act has caused your death. God doesn't need your help. Let God lead and be a follower. Don't go ahead of God. Know his word. And our major problem is we don't even know what God has said. Listen to me carefully. God did not excuse him because maybe he didn't know. Maybe the thing was going to fall. He says, don't touch it. If God says, don't touch it, don't touch it. All the excuses about God understands. He doesn't understand anything. Why didn't God understand this one? The thing was going to fall. What God is trying to say is that, do you think I can hold it? Did it do you think I didn't see that the, the, the uh, oxen stumbled? Do you think I'm blind? You are the one who have eyes. So you love my ark more than myself. Hmm? You know, how, that's how we behave. Sometimes we behave like we love God more than, we love people more than God. If God doesn't love us, he won't send his son to come and die for us. You, 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 you are pretending to love somebody more than God. You, let me ask you a question. Will you die for that person? You see, listen, and I'm saying this from experience because God told me once in my old church, he said, do you think you love the people more than I do? Because they punished somebody and I was making some. I said, ah, but this one. No, I had to do 
punished somebody. I mean, somebody did something, and I had to really reprimand the person. And I was like, I would tell him, oh, you see, no, yeah. Then God, I was praying, and God said that, do you think you love them more than I do love them? Have you forgotten in my word, I said, I do what? I discipline those that I love. And you think that you love them more than me, so you won't discipline. Is that what you think? I said, God, I'm sorry. I didn't think about it in that way. I'm very, very sorry. I went and I did double of what I should have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that was also wrong. <laughs> that was also wrong because now I overreacted. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, God says, go and stretch. Then I went to strike. Moses, so he couldn't get to the promised land. He didn't know. If he knew he was hating Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, that is why I want you to understand that. God, eh, you don't know him. How can Jesus be a piece of rock? But the question you need to ask yourself is how can a rock produce water? So if rocks begin to produce water, you, you have to understand they are not ordinary. If in a service, listen carefully, if in a service, boils are bursting, <laughs> hallelujah, eyes are being poked, you know that it's not an ordinary service because God is working. I don't know what you missed last week, but don't miss anything this week. Because God is, God is working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't begin to think for uh, Esau. Yeah, Esau was right. What would the bet right do to him? God knows how he was going to feed him. God knew that he needed food. And if he had not sold his birthright for food, God knew how he was going to feed him. Does God not feed the birds of the air? Where is their kitchen? Of course, they don't pay water bills. But they drink water. In fact, they don't drink water from the gutter. In my, in my, in my community, they drink from a tap. They open it themselves and they drink. Hallelujah. I said they do what? Oh yes, of course. They, they, they didn't drink. That one didn't drink alone. He opened it so that it will get to the ground and others, those who were there were drinking and he was going like, Hallelujah. Look at them. They were a family. And he was on top of the top. Yes. He came. Look, look at the son. Look at the mother-in-law and the father-in-law. And the cousin. They were all there. Hallelujah. And that one was standing on top there. And was turning the top. Put it there. Put it there for me. He was turning the top. God knows. If God knows how to give. Look. Look at him. Look, you see? And he was turning the thing. And you see? Uh huh. Go like this. The water was coming. And he was. Look, the reason I took this video was I was shocked to my bone. I had never seen anything like that before. How did they get wisdom to know that that tap has to be turned like this? If God can give bed wisdom, to turn a tap like this. He didn't go like this. He went like this. If God will give a bed that wisdom, you are more precious than the bed. So, so stop complaining. But if I leave this job, what will I do? You will die. God knows how he's going to take care of you. 
I said, you will not die. God knows how he's going. If, uh, yeah, but if I leave this relationship, if you leave it, God will take care of you. Yes, you think that your life depends on it because that's where you chop small, small. Hallelujah. But if you leave, God is going to provide for you. Yeah, but you see, yeah, but if I, if, if I go and say, they will sack me, let them sack you, God is going to provide for you. I just want you to understand that God, if God is taking care of Beth, look, I am not telling you a story. I'm showing you something that you can see with your eyes. Hallelujah. What are they doing at their back? Look, if God can do this, this is not from a book. I said, this is not from a book. Who is the teacher of the bed? Tell me. And they know. I mean, I can't still understand. I can't get my head around this. That a bed will go and stand on the standpipe and then begin to turn it and know that when the water is coming, I can do this and I can drink. And what goes on the ground, my, my mother-in-law, my, my, my father-in-law, my wife, my sister, or my sister in law, they can all drink. How would you? No. How can you imagine this happening? God Almighty is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can imagine. Ask yourself, where can my imagination take me? God says, I will beat it. I'll go beyond that. No, beloved, I don't know what is happening to us. He says, I will supply all your needs according to in glory in high places. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I can tell you this morning. I want to close. I still have some stuff. Next week we'll do. Because we'll go to Hebrews. And we'll look at what he did and how it affected him. So that you will learn to know what you must do. And look, we, are, we will pray. And any kind of thing that the enemy, any kind of oppression that you are going through, I want you from today, begin to remind yourself. Begin to, you begin to go and sit down. And look at certain things in your life. And look at your life. And look from back there how you have lived. And how that has, if, uh, has effect on you today. Look at what you have done. Look at who you dated in school. And look at your life today. And look at what, what he was giving you. And you are having confusion in your marriage. And you are having confusion in your relationships. And you don't understand. It started from there. Hallelujah. A seed was sown. And because of that seed that was sown, today it has roots. And it is affecting you. Hallelujah. It is not enough to cut it. You have to go to the roots and uproot it. Because the Bible says in Job that even the tree stump knows that at the scent of water. I said at the scent of what? It will sprout again. So I want you to understand that if you cut it at the scent of water, it will sprout again. It will be a cyclical thing that it goes and it comes. It goes and it comes. It goes and it comes because the roots are still there. Deal with the roots. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is time people are told the truth. It is time believers are told the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, you think your 10 CDs or the 100 or two, some 20,000 you got is a breakthrough for you. God has prepared 10 million for you. And you are playing around with 2 million. Do you know where God is going to take you? Don't sell your bet right. Dave, uh, Joseph could have sold his bet right of becoming the prime minister for a single sex act with Potiphar's wife and he would never have become the prime minister. Hallelujah. 
look, there were many prisons in, Israel, uh, in Egypt. Why did he take him to that particular prison? He, they, look, if he had done it, they would have taken him to anywhere. But because he didn't do it, God directed the prison that he should go. So that he knew these people are going to get into trouble. They will come there. and they will. Look, listen to me. Don't complain because you bless somebody and the person has forgotten about you. Don't complain. I said don't do what? Just live your life. Because God, God, I said God, He's going to put a burden on him. And whether he likes it or not, he will remember you. And he, will, he himself he said, ah, the guy said, oh, I have made them here. Pharaoh, you know what? When I was in prison. Pharaoh, do you remember you put me in prison? When I was there, there was a young guy there. And look, I had a dream. The same day my friend also had a dream. And the guy ex- explained it to us. And indeed, it came to pass just as he said. Pharaoh said, go and bring him. Listen to me. Joseph had a robe of many colors. The people took it. His brothers took it. They put animal blood in it. They thought that was the end of robe wearing for him. No. I said no. What the enemy took from you a new robe is coming. I said, a new robe is coming. And that robe is going to usher you into the king's palace. I said, a new robe is coming. Your enemy thought he has finished you. He thought your anointing was in the robe. Forget it. There is a new robe coming. There is a new anointing coming. There is a new power being released to you. God is lifting you up again. Hallelujah. We need to understand what God is doing. Hallelujah. What you lost yesterday cannot be compared with what is coming tomorrow. What, but, but, but you see, see why, why, why are you talking like that? I'm talking like that because the Bible tells me, I don't know whether you read some other book, but me, I read the Bible. And you know what the Bible tells me? The Bible tells me that whatever Job lost, he got a double portion of that. I said, he got, you see, what you are losing today, God, in his restoration, He's not going to give you the same. He's going to give you more. Hallelujah. Let the enemy continue to mess up with you. It is because you don't know who you are. The devil cannot mess up with me. I said he doesn't mess up with me. I said he does mess up with me. I know who I am. I am not afraid of the devil. Hallelujah. He can stand in the windows. He can do whatever. But I am not afraid of him. I know the one who lives in me. Bible tells me that those that are with me are more. Than... Hallelujah. Don't be like Elisha's servant. Look, Gehazi sees in parts. Ah, I can see many chariots coming to attack us. Hey, Elijah, why are you sleeping? Look at all the people around us. God says that, look, that, uh, Elisha says that that's what you see. But what I see, you don't see. God, open his eyes. May God open your eyes to see those around you. God is protecting you, but you don't know. God is keeping you, but you don't know. Last night, they planned from your, from your hometown. They came. When they got to your, 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 your house, they couldn't enter. Why? Because they came and there was a fire around your house. I said there was fire around you. They had to go back. Hallelujah. I don't know how they got transport. But they had to go back. Whether they walk, whether they run, whether they fly, I don't care. Because he who is protecting me knows how to keep me safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who are you? You need to know who you are. And you need to know the God you are serving. I am not afraid. I can talk to the devil anyhow. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I said I am not afraid. Because I don't speak on my own. I speak by the authority he's given me. And therefore I'm not afraid. I don't know why you are afraid. I don't know why you are afraid. 